Well, good morning. Happy Tuesday. Happy garbage day. Today is our garbage day, and this is one of the few days I only have two cans of leaves to go. Uh, with all the rain, and I think finally how all the leaves stop dropping, uh, it's a little bit easier to get the last cans out, and I'm still always grateful for our garbage man to take away all the mess and garbage out of my life, and uh, just reminds us how Jesus, who takes away our sins. Uh, I know I use that one a lot, and you're probably getting tired of me talking about garbage men, but uh, you need to be appreciative for all the blessings that God gives us in our lives, especially the forgiveness of our sins. Now, we're in the season of Advent. Did you see the tree behind me in our text that we've been using these last few weeks for our midweek Advent services? Have been focusing on individuals who had visits from an angel, specifically one, Gabriel. Gabriel's uh, one who brought messages from God, brought to Zechariah, to Elizabeth, to tell them they would have a child. They longed hope for, all the thought they were never going to have, that son. And he had a very special purpose. He would prepare the way of the Lord, of the Messiah. And that same angel came to Mary and to Joseph to tell them they would have a child. Now, this, again, was a miraculous conception and birth. And yet, this child would be named Jesus, for he would save his people from their sins. And so, we hear a lot about angels in the season of Advent. And so, it makes us think that, uh, you know, angels in Advent or angels in Christmas go together. But really, we need to realize that angels are part of our lives every day, a daily part of our living, even though we might not always be aware of it. And I want to share with you today a devotion from Lutheran Art Ministries called God's Protection. And the text I want to use is one that might be kind of familiar to you. I know you've heard it before from Psalm 91 11. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Now, as far as I can tell, there are two types of guardian angels. The first kind of guardian angel is the kind that's spoken of in the Bible. In this very familiar verse that I just read from Psalm 91, but there's more than that. Now, Jesus also spoke about children's guardian angels when he said, See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Now, we dare not forget also in Exodus 23, which says, There was a guardian angel assigned to the children of Israel. Behold, I will send an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. And then also to Daniel, in Daniel 6, 22, he was freshly rescued from the den of death, the lions, and he reports, my God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths. Now, this is a story I share with our chapel, with our uh, preschoolers just two weeks ago. Now, the second type of guardian angel, that's the first type. The second type is the type that, uh, uh, you know, guardian angel is a special kind of human being who shows up and often quite unexpectedly does the Lord's work. Now, there was a story back in St. Louis about one of these guardian angels. Here's what happened. A man was being pushed by his wife in a wheelchair. They made it as far out as the railroad tracks in Kirkwood, Missouri, where the man's chair got stuck on the tracks. Now, the wife couldn't move forward or backward, which was a problem because the train was coming, and it was coming fast. Julie and Chan Chandler Flanders were watching from their car when a lady came out of nowhere and ran to the fellow in the chair. The woman picked up the man and his chair and moved them safely. Now, by the time Julie and her brother made it to the man, the train was halfway through the crossing, and the woman who lifted the chair bound man to safety. Well, nobody got her name, and she was gone. The work of a guardian angel? Oh, most definitely. Earthly or heavenly, who can tell? My friends, the truth is, is that you have a Lord who loves you very, very much. His son's life, suffering, and death, and resurrection are proof of how much he is concerned about your eternity. But we make this great mistake if we think that the Lord's care and compassion is reserved only for the hereafter. The triune God cares for you, and your guardian angel is just the way he shows his concern. Now, if you've never seen your guardian angel, don't be surprised. Most prefer to work anonymously. But let me ask you, have you ever been almost in an accident, but somehow, some way, managed to be spared? Now, it is possible you avoid the accident because your lightning quick reflexes or your tremendous skill behind the wheel, or maybe not. Here's another. Please list all the times you've tripped or haven't tripped, I should say, or the illnesses that you didn't catch, all the friends who didn't betray you, and all the jobs from which you weren't fired. I mean, you can't do it, can you? That's because those things never happened. Was it luck or fate? 
Well, that's what some would say. But I know the Lord gives his holy angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. So know that you have a God who cares, who protects, who watches over you by use of his angels. And many times you're not even aware of how they act or how they work. And I shared with you the story from Kirkwood, Missouri, just outside of St. Louis, about the uh, illustration of the uh, woman and the man in the wheelchair who was saved. I remember one aspect in my own life. I think I was only about maybe eight or nine years old. My sister was about seven. And we were, my father, uh, living in Pittsburgh, California. There was a fire in the fireplace and we were watching a movie. I think it was called Concord, if I remember. It was on TV about a very fast plane and some of the things, the perils that went on with it. As we were sitting there, falling asleep, it was probably about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, there was a huge banging on our front door. My dad had two big wood doors and someone was railing on the door. Well, it shook all of us. We jumped up. My dad wasn't really sure. We didn't live in a very, uh, I'll say, a very safe town. He went to the door to check to make sure there wasn't anybody trying to break in or what was happening. As he got to the door, he said, who is it? And the person said, get out of your house now. Get out now. My dad was really concerned. He wasn't sure why. We were about to go to sleep. So he even told the person, well, we're about to go to bed. No, we can't. He said, they said, your house is on fire. Get out. My dad then opened the door very cautiously, looked out to see the person run from the front porch out in the middle of the street. As he went outside, he saw smoke coming from our roof. And our entire roof, which was a wood shingle, wood shake shingle, was engulfed in flames. My father came in and got me, grabbed my sister, who was still sleeping on the couch, and we all went outside. The fire truck came and put out the fire, which engulfed our entire roof of my father's house. Uh, there was a lot of damage on the inside, but thanks to insurance, it was all fixed. Here's the thing. That person who knocked on the door never saw it before, never saw it again. It wasn't a neighbor, and we didn't live on a street where anyone would ever pass by. Just suddenly in the middle of the night, at, like I said, about 10, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, this person comes, bangs on the door and says, get out if they didn't. Oh, that house would have collapsed and we would have been trapped inside. So again, my father, as we talked about that, he said, well, that must have been our guardian angel. <laughs> yeah. The things that we were spared from, the injuries, the tragedies that we weren't even aware, how God protects, God rescues, God saves. Know that he works every day in your life to watch over you, to protect you to provide for you. And I'll say most of the time, you won't even be aware of it. But those times that you are, that draw your attention back to maybe how you were spared from something that happened, how you were saved from an illness or from a cold, or how your life has kind of gone a little bit smoother here, where maybe it wasn't for other, maybe the best thing to do is just to stop and pause. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. You see, we talk a lot about angels in the season of Advent. We talk a lot about Gabriel and the messages they bring. But angels have a much larger role beyond that. And they serve our Lord. And in doing so, they serve us in his love, protecting us, caring for us, providing for us so that he might work out his will for our lives, so that his purposes for us might be known and lived out. So consider how the Lord is guiding you today and how he has continued to watch over and hem you and protect you so that you might continue to walk along the path that he has in store. Well, let's close our time in prayer, okay? Dear Lord, for all your blessings, including even all the bad things of life from which I have been spared, I thank you. May I, may I rejoice in all these things and in the Savior who is always with me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I thought it was helpful to talk about angels a little bit today and to remind ourselves that we do have angels who are active in our lives all the time because we have a Heavenly Father who loves us so much, who cares for us, who protects us, who watches over us, so much so that he gave his only son to die on the cross and rise from the grave. It's the gospel message, and angels had a role in that as well. Well, may your angel watch over you all of your days, and may the Lord continue to protect and guide you in your paths for his past for your life. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Stay warm and enjoy the sun. Aloha, and I love you.